Hello everyone, welcome back to Nomoria. It's been quite some time between episodes, but luckily for us, our gnomes have no concept of that kind of time. So we can just continue right along and everything is as if we just stopped playing a minute ago. But you already knew that. Just doing a quick survey, try to catch my bearings on what I was doing. I know we were planting some trees, preparing for winter. We have some wheat seeds that still can be planted. 50 more seeds can be planted. And these are cotton seeds, strawberry seeds. Yeah, so basically when they have the wheat seeds, they'll go and plant them. I believe we are also working on expanding our workshop area and our total overall value. Our great hall is up to 950, total worth 4170, not bad. I know getting this blacksmith, that will help. We have the smelter, a carpenter, that's the next one being built, fantastic. And after that one, we'll get a metal worker built. We'll let them figure out the parts. And rotating structure. After they clean up this dirt, we'll go ahead and mine out some more here. I wonder how we're going down here. We still have a little bit of copper just laying on the ground. We can mine out this as well. This is probably coal. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, this is just coal. Go get the copper for us. Still haven't found anything useful on this level, unfortunately, except for the gems. We'll still have to wait a bit of time for the dirt to be picked up. We'll need to wait for somebody. First, I guess they'll do the rocks, and then they'll do the dirt. still need the anvil, the hearth, and the bellows for the metal worker. But it looks like they're smelting the bars for the anvil now. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Fantastic. So let's continue to chug away at this vein here. Our other miner must be asleep. Or otherwise occupied. Well, it's dark out, so we can't see what's going on. Our food stockpiles are kind of running low as well. So let's go ahead and pull from these trees. Auto save, the game pauses. Yeah, a lot of our people are asleep right now, unfortunately. Making some good progress into this copper. I'm going to leave that at that for now. That'll be enough material to get the things we wanted. Hopefully they'll get all that together soon. Ah. Thank you for 
foraging that food. Outside looks clear. We have a honey badger over on the other side. That will definitely not be enough food. So we're hopefully they won't have to go through all of the other material first before we'll get this wall mined out. If our food stockpiles dwindle too much lower, I'll force it, but for now we'll just let him get to it whenever he wants. And then as soon as that wall opens up, we'll set our fighters to train here and have everybody else go out and gather some food from the trees outside. It'll probably take until he's done mining all of this, though. Depending on where the other miner is and when he will get to work. So let's just speed it up for now. I don't want to waste too much of the day though, because we can't see outside at night until we get some torches put up. They're just gathering this milk here. That's fine. Alright, it is almost 11. And we're now starting to haul that stuff. Ah, we're getting the metal worker built at least. That's a good news. Our miner must have gone to sleep. Yep. Sad times. Alright, it, it's about time to get the pickaxe built. And at the same time, well, let's get that pickaxe built. And then we'll craft our first statue. We have plenty of time until the end of the month, but we want to get that statue built before the end of the month so we can increase our value and hopefully get another gnome. But sadly, it looks like we're going to have to wait until that pickaxe is made or until our miner wakes up, because I think we are down to one pickaxe. We can check here with Tool. Oh, we have two. I hope he doesn't have both of them equipped. I thought I had two miners. Or two people who would mine before anything else. Let's check out custom one. Yeah, mining. So somebody could possibly be stuck. I hope not. Oh, no, there we go. Finally coming and opening this up at 2 o'clock. So let's go ahead and forage out here. And that should be pretty high priority besides hauling the things out here because I haven't really given them any other jobs to do. And let's get training. Squad one. Half of that squad's probably asleep. Yep. Alright, well, there's no sense in you training by yourself. You'll go forage, so at least you're out here where you are needed. Right now is about when the goblins would attack with my luck. That's okay, we haven't fought them yet, so they can come at us. Ah, yes, lots and lots of beautiful apples. Just 
don't forget to bring them in. Uh, somebody's finally awake. So nice of you to join us. Hopefully somebody goes and grabs a wheelbarrow and hauls all of these at the same time. That would be ideal. Uh, they're going to plant the saplings. Somebody better be coming back with a wheelbarrow. Aha! Yes, you can grab those first. That's fine. Go on out here and grab these before dark falls, and we will seal the gate back up. Hopefully there's nothing else out here. And I know I'm playing like a chicken, but like I said, one single swipe of a sword can decapitate a gnome who is not wearing a helmet, basically. Or just a tiny nick can make them lose their leg and forever be wobbling around on one leg until you can get prosthetics built. So until I get armor, I'm going to be a little bit cautious. And hopefully that doesn't lead our gnomes to be starving to death or someone to get locked outside. But now that everything's cleaned up, we can go ahead and make a little bit more room. We have that pickaxe made, so we can tell them to make a statue, although if we don't have the materials for it, they can't. So we should probably continue on that. As well as clearing out room for more workshops. Get some more torches built. Also, dig in between these, out a little bit here, and here, and lastly we'll do here. Until they get more torches built, that will be sufficient for now. We should now at least have three people mining. Well, they're already done up here, so we only have two for now set up a clay stockpile? We did. Okay, they'll get to that eventually. Fantastic. We have our own food being produced. I think we can expand on the strawberry farm outwards and downwards one. Because having a lot of extra fruit lying around inside the base is better than having to go outside and get it. Until we have things like crossbows and guns and we laugh in the faces of the goblins. Ah, uh, we're doing apple wood here, that's why. That's slow. And I don't want to chop down any apple trees inside. Definitely not right now. Okay, let's check on the mining. A little bit more copper here. Now, ideally, we'll run into another copper vein or some sort. If not, and it does, if it doesn't happen soon, we'll just go down to here, dig some stairs down, right there because we know there's malachite right here. And we can also see there's no easily accessible areas that enemies can get from. See, there's like a, a solid wall. Enemies can't get to the ramp from inside this cavern to where the malachite is. So we can mine that out and have a good look at what might be inside that tunnel waiting for us to foolishly poke our heads through. 
As far as I know, none of, nothing ranged. No, there's no ranged enemies in this game yet. Nor do I think there will ever be anything added. There might be a mod of some sort that adds, but... We're not playing with that. In fact, I don't think we're playing with any mods. Build another torch there. And we didn't find any more copper, unfortunately, but that's just over here. Seems the jackpot was over here, and that's where they're going to go next. We still do not have enough bars for the statue, but they will get to that eventually. Ah, it's daytime again. We can look around. Still clear. Still got a good supply of food and drink, so there's no need in doing anything rash. We got a really good supply of strawberries ready to be harvested, actually. We might be needing another farmer. It might just be that they have too many people sleeping or too many other jobs given to them at the time, but we might need another farmer. Oh, you're gonna take quite a while to get through that. Ah, we have lots of torches being built though, so that gives us a lot more room to explore. So even if we don't find any ore, we still need the rock. making blocks to increase our value and other things. You can make swords out of the blocks. I think you can have stone shields. I know you can have wooden shields. Where is the stone worker? Yeah, you can have stone swords, hand axes, and hammers. Of course, half of the furniture requires stone in some way, shape, or form. No shortage of needing stone. We are out of logs, though. And we have lots of trees up here that we don't need to have. So let's do a massive deforestation of this area here. And while we're at it, let's replace the floor with the dirt on the clay patches. So that when we're ready to plant some more farms there, we can go over the entire spot. And I did miss a few trees. We'll just take them all down. I know they'll be carrying those logs away as soon as they get cut down because they are hurting for logs right now. And I even put a little reminder up there in the top corner and I still let them run out. I am not the best of overlords, I suppose. We get the situation taken care of now. We had people not doing anything, ready to jump on it. So hopefully we have some luck with this over here. I'm going to, of course, be building torches where I can as soon as I can. There's a little bit more. Let's keep this going. I would like if this vein continued all the way to the wall. Let's speed up time a little bit. They mine this a little too slowly for my taste. And eventually we'll see someone just coming by and snagging these little bits of ore laying. Right now, most of the people are occupied cutting down trees. These gnomes just prefer the mustiness of the underground to the fresh air above. Or they're down here sharing a pint while everyone else is working in the sun. That's probably more like it. I believe that is plenty for now. We have other things that need to be done. 
It's enough logs. 33 logs is enough. We have things that need to be hauled. Bars that need to be smelted. And walls that need to be mined. Is that more coal? Indeed it is. Get more torches built here and here. Ah, uh, he's going to bed. All right, well that's the ore we're getting for now. He's coming up here probably to haul the stones. No, he's grabbing all the ore. Fantastic. That means whoever's smelting doesn't have to make eight trips now. They can just make quick trips to where I've told them to stockpile the ore. Which is right in this area right here, which is right next to the smelter. Oh, and our statue's being made. Fantastic. I could not be happier. At least at the moment get this statue made. Hopefully it's a nice statue and it's worth lots of money. And we will place it in our great hall as soon as it is completed. Copper statue. Crafted by Cellfire. It's just a regular copper statue, but that's okay because it's not like a poorly crafted one, so it's worth 500. And our great hall itself is worth 950. So adding another 500 is just, you know, really, really good. And I'm going to select copper statue so they don't go building another one. And we'll place it right there. So the value, 950. As soon as they get around to placing that, it should go up to 1450. I don't know why it takes so long to haul up a statue down, unless he's making some sort of foundation. Yeah, worth 1450. So our overall kingdom worth is now 4849. Not bad. It's the eighth day of summer, almost the ninth day. We might have enough time to get another statue down before the end of this season. And of course the value of our kingdom depicts how many settlers we get at the end of the season. Or the beginning of the next season, I guess you should say. Because it happens after the beginning of the next season. Of course, it also increases the strength and armor of all of the goblins that invade you, so... Eventually, you're not going to want to be increasing your value until you're ready for it. Let's go ahead and finish this little spider web right here. Now that she's got that torch placed. There. Ooh! Did you hear that? The music's changed. Music change usually means goblin invasion of some sort. So let's see. Oh, our armored person is sleeping. That is not good. However,. Cell fire does not. So let's get cell fire up here and ready. They're going to set up a tunnel and they're just going to come in wherever they feel like, basically. And I don't know where that is. Now, one way of evading attacks is they can tunnel through walls, but if you don't have anything on the surface that you really want to keep, like they would slaughter my axe, but I could just bring everybody down and take out the stairs, but we're not going to do that. Hopefully they don't come through and cut all of our heads off, but we'll at least get cell fire out here on the wall, and they're going to come through regardless. So hopefully they won't get through until Cloud is awakened. 
But we do have a little group right here, so I mean, we have an armed or several armed gnomes for them to come at. And my yaks will spot them if they get too close to my yaks first. We might get lucky and it might turn daylight and I might actually be able to see where they are before they are able to make it into my kingdom. I don't know what time we're actually given visibility outside. Okay, here's... Let's pause it. We've got a goblin. Nothing. Yeah, the first wave is usually... And nothing. Two goblins, they're not carrying anything. The first wave is usually kind of... You know, easy. I guess would be the best way to describe it. I'm not seeing a tunneler, so this might indeed be the first one. Or something is bugged. If so, it doesn't matter. Very soon we're going to be coming across multiple kinds of enemies, and goblins will be the least of our concern. Alright, let's go ahead and play it. They should hang around for a while, and as soon as that wall opens up, they'll come rushing in. So let's pause it. Let's turn their training off. And then we're going to turn it on here and maybe back on here. So the first thing he should do is the closest job that he prefers, which is mining, so it should be opening this wall. And as soon as we open the wall, here they come. Alright, so we get back to training. Oh, are they not coming? Okay, well, I don't like to leave them just sitting there, so we are going to attack. Squad 1, attack. Take them off training. Although, I'm not sure if you have to. Once you initial, uh, initiate an attack order, I think they just take that. And we're going to attack them. Yes, a goblin has been spotted. That's fine. Charge! Okay, we're going to pause it here. Another goblin has been spotted. And we're going to check out the event, the combat log, group fight. And we'll see how badly we've been maimed in the two seconds that it's gone. So gray usually means misses. Yellows is some sort of dodge or parry. Whether it's the enemy who dodges or you who dodges, it doesn't matter. It's still in yellow. White is some sort of contact, but it's generally not something that you really need to watch for. What you need to watch for are the purples and the reds. If you have purple or red right after white, that means the white was a, a good hit. So Selfire the Elite Warlord swings with his marble hammer at the goblin, hitting the left eye and crushing the eye. The goblin's left eye has been mangled and he is temporarily blinded. Cloud swings with his copper pickaxe at the goblin. Apparently he brings his pickaxe to training. Hitting the right arm, poking the skin, poking the muscle, and poking the bone. The goblin's right arm is bleeding, and an artery has been struck. Now, if they were to run now, the goblin would eventually die from his bleeding. Wan swings with her copper pickaxe at the goblin, hitting the right arm, poking the skin, poking the muscle, and poking the bone. Alright, we're just going to skip the rest of these till we get to something good. Wan swings with her marble sword at the goblin, hitting the head and cutting the skin. The goblin bites Selfire, but Selfire dodges. The goblin kicks Wan, but Wan dodges. This is why it's good to have your players train. Let's go ahead and pa or play it again. We've got four people now. Five people now. They are swarmed all over these goblins. Let's see if there's anything that's really bad that's happened to us. Ranch, the goblin punches Rancher, hitting the left leg, smashing the skin, smashing the muscle, and smashing the bone. Rancher falls to the ground. And then there's a bunch of misses after that. That looks like about the worst. Juan falls to the ground. Goblin's left leg is bleeding. Okay, we're, we're still doing okay. Another way you can go is you can go into your population. 
and under assign I can click Juan and click his health. Juan has an injured upper body, lower body, and a right leg. Juan has fallen over. Not the worst of times. We're still kind of kicking these goblins butts. But they can do some serious damage with just their hands and feet. And face. The goblin has died, the goblin has died. Alright, let's check out how that happened. Now we need to check because it's not a cur it's not an active event anymore. We need to check the more specific things. So here we have red is usually dying. So cloud swings with his copper pickaxe, hitting the upper body, poking the skin, poking the ribs, and piercing through the heart. And the goblin has died. Cellfire falls to the ground. Oh no! And then who delivers the last hit? Rancher punches the goblin, hitting the neck, smashing the skin, and crushing the throat. The goblin is suffocating, the goblin has died. That is revenge for him getting knocked to the ground. Alright, well, the way our goblin or our gnomes are set up, they are very good team players. Whether they are equipped with weapons or not, they Basically, you know, the call to arms went out and they all rushed. So we need to get them equipped very quickly with the settings that I have. Now why? What's wrong with you, Cellfire? Has an injured upper body, lower body, right leg, left foot, right arm, and left arm! <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> this is why it's important to have everybody armored. Okay, well... There are bandages available somewhere. I'm not quite sure. Oh, you know what? They were probably in one of these crates or something. Somewhere something got moved. But quickly, I don't think I've set up a tailor shop or anything yet. So we don't have any bandages. Oops. All right, well, we're going to build down here next to our deal here. We're going to build a loom. We're going to get that started. And hopefully there's some good progress. We'll get some good progress done on this and towards the tailor shop. We really need a yak to be born that we can afford to slaughter and take its bone. But Cellfire will go and grab some bandages. Everybody should be going and grabbing some bandages. Yep, there they are. There we go. We still have 17 bandages, it looks like. So we do have a little bit of time to get this done. But that'll have to do it for this episode. So I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you next time.